before buyback of shares before getting into the buyback of shares what is issue of shares why we are issuing shares you should tell me the reason why we are issuing shares to whom we will issue shares what is the purpose of issuing shares share your views first to make capital what about others for raising capital from prevention for additional capital ravina what about others to raise fund bhubadi what about others what about others what about others yes all of you correct we need money for running our business there are many ways to get the money one of the major way majority way is shares are issued to investor for collecting uh, capital yes correct so why we are issuing we need money to run our business so we are issuing shares to shareholders so that is why we are issuing shares we got the money and we will put in our business and we will gen- we will generate profit and pay dividend to our shareholders that is the objective so issue of share is the, that is the objective you can issue shares or you can issue debentures that is another way of raising loan sorry raising money and you can borrow from banks you can borrow from uh, other companies corporate borrowings you can borrow from related parties you can borrow unsecured loans all these things are uh, one uh, main you know raising money and getting money into the company is there many method so but what we are going to study is buyback of shares which means already shares is issued to my shareholder that shares i am going to buy back buy back means company already issued shares to shareholder now the company itself going to buy back from the shareholder it means they are going to reduce their share capital 1 crore rupees is my share 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 capital amount share capital amount is 1 crore i have 1 lakh shares in my company 1 lakh into 100 1 crore 1 lakh into 100 1 crore so 1 lakh shares i have presently now i am going to buy back 25000 shares which means my share capital will be reduced to 75 lakhs 25 lakhs i am going to reduce 25000 into 100 25 lakhs 1 crore minus 25 lakhs balance 75 lakhs my revised share capital becomes 75 lakhs that is the meaning of buy back i am going to buy back the shares from my shareholders okay why we are buying back what is the procedure for buying back you get a lot of one mark from this topic if the problems are not asked at least to minimum one or two marks they will ask one mark because lot of provision is there buy back means which which act i should follow whether is there any specific act or whether it is just an accounting treatment you got it or not all these things we should know before reporting the problem okay so buy back practical aspect and also buy back provisional company act provisional means company act 2013 what is have to buy back under a sorry under company act 2013 what is the practical purpose why we are doing this buy back that you should know what is the provision the legal purpose that you should know what is the accounting treatment how to account that also you should know first you should know the practical reason second you should know the legal compliances third you should know the accounting treatment okay before that i already explained what is buyback that nothing but i am going to buy back my own shares company shares 
and i will pay my shareholder and they will be they will get exit out of the company and my share capital is also reduced this is the meaning of buyback how to do we have to refer the legal compliances and what how to do how to account we have to refer the accounting treatment okay now the first question is now my first question is why buyback is required why we are buying back i explained already what is the meaning of buyback now i am asking what is the reason for buyback what is the reason for buyback why we are buying back shares why company is buying back the shares it is our shareholder only na why we should pay money and we should buy our shares what is the reason tell me just to put your thoughts just put your thoughts why we are buying back why we are buying back maturity period is over i'm talking about equity shares equity for equity shares will come with any life i'm talking about equity shares equity shares are coming with life or excess capital we have buy back okay if the shares are undervalued the company shall have more retained earnings so it buy back its shares okay good so normally equity shares does not have any life it is an unlimited life once you come up to you close the company you can have the equity shareholder in your company because they are the owner of the company so other answers i agree that uh, to ignore dividend to ignore dividend yeah that also reasonably acceptable uh thing is majorly i have uh what a person no, there are some business there are some business there are some companies who generated huge profits already already why they generated means they have good business in past they have good business in past they made huge profits huge cash they are having in hand huge cash they are having in hand in bank they are having huge cash but uh, future is not so bright because their business model is like that in past they generated huge profit they are having in the balance sheet future also they don't have any expansion plan because market is so dull demand is so less and technology is upgraded so they already have generated huge profit so in this case what they will do now instead of paying dividend they will go for buyback why because they have an excess cash they don't know what to do they don't have any investment plan so better we can uh, reduce our share capital for that we can buy back our shares so that uh, our shareholders are less less shareholder means more pro- if uh, if we generate more profit then the wealth will be created extra if i have more shareholders then wealth will be reduced in future if i have less shareholders then i can increase their value of wealth of the wealth of the shareholders so that is the idea and also i don't know what to do with my cash i don't have any investment plan so instead of that i would buy back my shares itself so that i will spend this money for buying the shares my own shares that is one major reason there are many reasons we will uh, go through all those reasons we will go through all those reasons so before that what i discuss now 
buyback of securities is a very important tool for companies who want to raise share capital so by buying back the shares i am reducing my share capital that is the meaning so buyback provisions provisions related to buybacks covered under section 68 69 70 you can expect one more from this section 68 69 70 is the sessions okay then advantages of buyback advantages means you can say reasons also reasons for buyback why i am going for buyback what is the reason many reasons we will understand what it is given we will understand one by one it is an alternative mode of production in capital without requiring the approval of the court company law board nclt that is national company law tribunal why this is an alternative mode because protection of share capital protection of share capital you cannot reduce you cannot strike off the capital without the approval of without the approval of high court you can do that generally without the approval of company law board without the approval of nclt you can't simply reduce your share capital such a uh, difficulty and a practical uh, practical uh, you know difficulty is there actually to reduce the share capital but uh, through the buyback you can easily do it for that you have to use the section 68 670 for reducing the share capital otherwise you have to go to court or you can go to the company law board then only you can reduce the share capital so it is an easy method easy way for reducing the share capital by going by buyback provision 68970 provision next point to improve earnings per share how this will improve my earnings per share how this will improve my earnings per share yes of course it will improve the earnings per share i will show you the example you know what is eps right eps eps is earning per share one shareholder how much money earning eps means shares means equity shareholder generally say for example my net profit is 10 lakh and number of shares equal to 2 lakh so eps equal to 10 lakh divided by 2 lakh equal to rupees 5 per share my eps per share earning is 5 rupees how 10 lakh is my profit number of shares is 2 lakh so 10 lakh divided by 2 lakh equal to 5 rupees per share which means one shareholder is earning 5 rupees in that company now what happens there is a buyback now what happens there is a buyback of 1 lakh share assume buyback of 1 lakh share which means presently i have 2 lakh minus i bought 1 lakh share company is buying back the 1 lakh shares which means after buyback my remaining shareholder becomes 1 lakh shareholder only in company because 1 lakh shareholders i bought back which means i reduce i remaining shareholder is only remaining is equal to only 1 lakh shares now next year also same 10 lakh profit next year also same 10 lakh profit of my company and number of shareholders is only 1 lakh so 10 lakh divided by 1 lakh equal to rupees 10 per share 10 lakh divided by 1 lakh equal to rupees 10 per share so previously previously it is 5 previously it is 5 okay now it becomes 10 now it becomes 10 rupees how because of buyback that is what 
next point is to improve the earning per share because of by the my earnings is getting improved next to improve return on capital return on net worth and to enhance long term shareholder similarly it will you will get more return also because i have less capital more profit in future i have less capital more profit means my return will increase automatically to provide an additional exit route to shareholder when shares are undervalued or thinly traded meaning sometimes what will happen very good company very good company they are performing very good but still their company shares are not well traded in the stock market stock market you know right they will do buying selling the shares in market market price based on the market price sometimes what will happen there are some company even though they are performing well but still uh, what happens you know their share will be traded at very very less market price due to various reason due to various reason uh, their their share prices are traded at very low price investors are frustrated actually shareholders are frustrated why this company share is not getting uh, more benefit we are not uh, getting any uh, increase in this share, share in the market share market the shares uh, price are quoted at very low price so even though this company is performing well still this company share price is quoted at very low price what to do we are not able to sell in the market nobody is ready to purchase that time what will happen no company itself will purchase that is buyback because they have excess cash they are purchasing why with their purchasing in market nobody is interested to purchase so we itself will purchase from you for best amount we will give you more amount to you okay which will be more than the market price next to point is to enhance consolidation of stake in the company yes of course then to prevent unwelcome unwelcome take over bids unwelcome take over bid means what hostile take over what is hostile take over hostile take over means say for example i am running i am running a very good company okay uh, this i am perform i my company is uh, you know high worth company but uh, my company is like a startup new company still i am performing very well what happens you know very very large company big company take for example this uh, walmart 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 was initially trying to purchase in the flipkart you okay walmart is a giant company they are going to they, they tried to purchase the flipkart initially so how to avoid now flipkart wants to avoid by you know by selling their shares to the walmart because flipkart shares are available with shareholder what walmart will do walmart will go to the flipkart shareholders you sell your flipkart share to me then i will become the major shareholder in the flipkart then i will control the flipkart how to avoid how how can this uh, be avoided by flipkart they will call the shareholders and uh, what they will say give your all shares to me give your all shares to flipkart itself we will itself buy the shares from you don't sell to third party don't sell to the giant company we want to do business we want to do business ourselves but uh, practically actually the flipkart is already bought by walmart that is different thing but i am giving an example how to avoid this is called hostile takeover i am not interested but they are trying to force me to sell my shares then how to avoid this hostile takeover you 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 take the lead and you purchase that shares by applying buyback provisions that is the meaning of hostile takeover unwelcome takeover bit means all sale takeover okay why we are studying all these things sir it will be useful for one more definitely to return surplus cash to shareholder as i already said i have huge cash in my bank account i don't know what to do so sell so i am using for buyback purpose that is the reason to achieve optimum capital structure that is also one thing my debt to equity ratio i have to maintain 2 is to 1 as per the bank as per the bank loan i have to maintain 2 is to 1 debt to equity ratio but presently i am not able to maintain because i have more capital 
so i have to reduce the capital why because i have to match with my debt so i am buying i am buying back the shares why i am buying back because bank is saying you should have to do is to one debt equity ratio then only i will give you loan so i have to get the optimum capital structure so this is what the main reasons for buyback advantages of buyback also you can say so with this you have uh, you got some idea of our buyback reason practical reason you are you understood the practical reason shall we proceed further shall we proceed further shall we go to the next page next page is about the provisions under the buyback shall we go to the next page yes sir okay provisions under the buyback why we are studying provision one more purpose as well as uh, for solving the problem accounting for accounting the buyback itself you should know the provision then only you can account the buyback without accounting the without uh, knowing the provision you cannot buy you cannot uh, do the accounting so you should know the provision first then only you can go for accounting Sixty-eight. Sixty-eight means section sixty-eight deals with purchases can be made. Purchases means buyback can be made out of what? Buyback means what? I am buying back shares. For that, by when I am buying back, I need money. Then only I can pay my shareholder. I can buy back the shares. That the money from which account I can use? Which account I should use for buying back the shares is given in. section 68 under the company act section 68 under the company act so which money i can use first one is i can use my free resource i can use my free resource free resource means what sir which is available for distribution to shareholders freely which is available for distribution to shareholder freely okay then securities premium account i can use my free resource account i can use my securities premium account or proceeds of the issue of any shares or other specified securities first thing is how can i buy back the shares i can use my free resource amount whatever what is available in free resource that i can use or the securities premium amount that also i can use for buy back third one is i don't uh, i can there is a third option which is i will issue some shares i will issue some new shares from that new share i, I got money na that money i will use it for buying the old shares that is existing shares i am issuing new shares which is totally different from the old shares for example face value of new shares is 5 rupees only but existing share face value is 10 rupees that is a different new shares so i am issuing new shares for and getting that money and i use for buying back the old shares okay so from this way i can generate money from this way i can use the money okay so i will take break of 2 uh, minutes after 2 minutes we will meet after 2 minutes we will meet so just uh, go through this uh, points bye bye points after 2 minutes we will meet and we will continue so we will continue provisions of buyback 
what are the provisions of buyback uh, buyback means company is having money so they want to buy back it is their wish they can do it as per their wish because their own money they can do whatever they want it is not like that they cannot do whatever they want because they are governing you by company act they have to follow the company act so as per their wish they can't do buy back there is a procedure for buy back there is a provision for buy back when we buy when the company intended to buy back the shares they have to follow that procedure otherwise buy back is not possible buy back is invalid okay so what are the provision major provision major points covered here actually so what is the point we'll go through this is what i discuss up to point number c we discuss and uh, next point after c no buyback of any kind of shares or specified securities shall be made out of proceeds of any other issue of the same kind of shares or same kind of other specified securities so what they are trying to say what they are trying to say is say for example i have uh, i have totally 2 lakh shares existing shares face value is 100 which means i have two crores two crores in my capital share capital is two crores now what i am going to do is i am going to buy back of this 1 lakh shares of 100 which means after the buyback my share capital becomes 1 crore 1 lakh and remaining shares will be 1 lakh shares now the my first thing is as per the as per the section 68 i can use money from free reserve i can use money from securities premium account else i can issue new shares i can issue new shares this is what we studied but the fourth point if you go to the fourth point that is after c no buyback of any kind of shares or other specified securities shall be made out of the proceeds of an ale is of the same kind of shares or the same kind of other specified securities what they are trying to say is this new shares for you know issued for the purpose of this new shares issued for the purpose of buyback should be different totally different means what say for example i am issuing 10000 shares face value is 1000 rupees it means i am collecting 1 crore rupees why i am collecting this 1 crore for buying back the above amount for buying back this for paying this amount for paying this amount i am issuing new shares which is totally different different in what sense because you see face value is different from the old shares what is old share face value 100 rupees what is the number of shares 1 lakh i should not again issue new shares i should not again issue new shares which is having same nature of value and numbers that's what they are trying to say you, you issue new shares which should be totally different from the existing shares okay that is what they are saying section 68 continuation condi- conditions further conditions when i am going for buyback when i am going for buyback it should be authorized in my articles of association memorandum of association articles of association it's an parent document for the companies uh, under the companies act okay so this uh, association articles of association we have to uh, you know we have to put lot of rights responsibilities liabilities powers duties of the companies as well as directors shareholders everybody one of the thing we should put this inside is buyback power companies having rights to buyback 
that's the thing we should enter in the articles of association genuinely we can go for buyback and the special resolution not normal resolution ordinary resolution special resolution has been passed at general meeting of the company authorizing the buyback when i am going for buyback uh, general meeting not board meeting in general meeting which means shareholders meeting la i have to pass special resolution and i have to go for buyback but that special resolution is not required but that special resolution is not required when it is not required means if the buyback is 10% or less of the total paid capital and free resource of the company got it i am not going to buy back more than 10% of my free resource and paid up capital that amount only i am going to buy if it is 10% of my paid up capital and free resource na then odd this special resolution at general meeting is not required only board meeting that is director meeting only board meeting that is directing director meeting approval is enough only board meeting that is director meeting their approval is enough but not more than 10 percentage but not more than 10 percentage then you can ask me next question what is the maximum limit sir what is the maximum limit maximum limit means what how much i can buy back shall i buy back 100 percentage share capital shall i buy back 50 percentage share capital shall i buy back 75 percentage capital what is the maximum limit on allowed under the company act any guess can you guess the percentage maximum allowed limit under the buyback any guess under the please just share your views maximum allowed limit under the buyback share your views 100 percentage common sense what about others what about others 90 percentage from bhupati what about others what about others this is what one mark actually this is what mcq and this is nothing but mcq what i am discussing is nothing but mcq if you are clear with this then you can handle the mcq easily what about others any other answer share your views 25 percentage from pravina what about others maximum limit for buyback it is 25 percentage only it is 25 percentage so at one shot i cannot buy back more than 25 percentage the buyback is 25 percentage or less of the aggregate of paid up capital and free resource of the company okay the buyback is 25 percentage or less of the aggregate paid up capital and free resource of the company i cannot buy back more than 25 percentage of my aggregate of paid up capital and free resource of the company got it one mark 10 percentage for board approval board meeting itself 10 percentage up to 10 percentage i can do more than 10 to 25 percentage i should go for uh, special resolution in general meeting what about next one debt to equity ratio should be maintained post buyback to is to 1 post buyback debt to equity ratio i should maintain to is to 1 meaning after this buyback after this buyback if i compare my debt versus equity if i compare this debt versus equity it should be maintained at 2 is to 1 minimum should be maintained at 2 is to 1 minimum okay i should have two times of my equity at least debt means what debt means loans long term loans generally long term loans not like sundry it has bills payable it's under current liability not debt long term loans borrowings debentures all these things are debts debt equity ratio should be 2 is to 1 post buyback debt equity ratio should be 2 is to 1 post buyback 
Depth means I said equity means what? As per you, what is equity? Equity means what? Equity means what? Equity includes what all the items? Equity includes what all the items? Equity includes share capital plus resource and surplus. But not revaluation reserve. But not a revaluation reserve. Not investment valuation reserve. Not foreign exchange valuation reserve. All those reserves are non cash reserve. Non cash reserve and specifically created for some purpose. Resource and surplus means available for the shareholders. Resource and surplus means available for the shareholders. Debt means secured and unsecured debts owned by the after buyback. And equity means aggregate of paid up capital and its free resource. Okay. This is one condition you should remember. What is the next condition? Next condition, this is also important, one more purpose. When I am going for buyback, no. Whatever the shares I am buying back should be fully paid. Whatever the buying back, uh, that particular share should be fully paid up. Partly paid up shares, I cannot buy back. Fully paid up shares. This also you should remember while solving the problem. While solving the problem, this also you should remember. What about others? What about next point? Next point is once I made a buyback, once I announced the buyback, one year cooling period is there. Up to one year, I should not do another buyback. Once I made a buyback, now I have to wait for uh, one year for another buyback. That's what they said. No offer of buyback shall be made within a period of one year from the date of the proceeding of offer of buyback. Once buyback is over, now first buyback is over, when it is over now, from that uh, period to one year, I have to wait. From the completion of first buyback, uh, one year I have to wait for the next buyback. That is what's said here. Okay? Time limit. Every buyback shall be completed within a period of one year from the date of filing special resolution. Once I decided for buyback, now I have to complete that buyback procedure within one year. I should not do that. I should not lengthy the process for more than one year. Once I announce the buyback, all the formalities, all the procedures, all the actual happening should be completed within one year. Capital redemption reserve. Capital redemption reserve. So what they are trying to say here, when a company purchases its own shares out of free resource or security premium account, the sum equal to the nominal value of the shares so purchased shall be transferred to the capital redemption reserve and details of such transfer shall be disclosed in the balance sheet. The capital redemption reserve may be applied by the company in paying up unissued shares of the company to be issued uh, to the members of the company as fully paid up, fully paid bonus shares. So what they are trying to say, what they are trying to say is, as I said, as I said, as I said, company can do buyback. The company can do buyback under section 68 by using policy amount. One is free resource, another one is securities premium account, another of another one is by issuing new shares. So what they are trying to say is if you are using, if you are using, if you are using free resource or security premium account for the purpose for the purpose of buyback means for the purpose of buyback means what they are saying is only free reserve or security premium account remember not new issue of shares if i am using money from free resource or security premium account for the purpose of buyback then i should create then i should create what i should create i have to create one account called crr account that is nothing but capital redemption reserve. CR or capital redemption reserve account. Okay. What value I should create? Next thing is what value I should create? I should create nominal value of the shares redeemed or the shares bought buyback or the shares bought back not market 
value. Not market value. Nominal value of the shares bought back. For that reason, I have to create one additional reserve in my balance sheet. Okay? That is all about CRR. That uh, capital redemption reserve account, that money, whatever the reserve available, that I can use it for only for the purpose of bonus issue, bonus shares, not for other purpose. Restriction on buyback. Restriction on buyback means what? When I cannot do buyback, that is what the restriction on buyback. No company shall directly or indirectly purchase its own shares or other specified securities through any subsidiary company, including its own subsidiary company. Through any investment company or group of investment company. So what they are trying to say? If I want to go for buyback, I think that you to copy. If I want to go for buyback, I should direct. I should directly go with the public. I should not. Uh, I should not inform to. I should not inform to uh, my subsidiary company. I should not inform to my subsidiary company. What I should not inform? I am going for buyback instead of directly. I am buying. Back. Subsidiary company, I am saying to subsidiary company, you buy back the shares from the shareholder and later on you sell to me. It's not allowed. Okay? If I go, if I want to go for buyback, I should directly go to buy back to the from the public itself. Got it? Similarly, I should not go through the investment company also. And also restriction of buyback, next point is. I should not do it. I should not make any default in cost. If I go for buyback now, first I should pay my debenture holder interest properly. Then only you can buy back the shares. If you are already defaulted the interest, then why you are having buyback? First you pay the interest to your debenture holder. Then you go for buyback. Or if any pending dividend, already dividend is announced, but not paid, means that I have to pay. That is what said here. Interest payment, redemption of dependence, whatever it is, repayment of dependence, repay, re redeemable preference shares, all these things I have to clear. I have to use the money for all the purposes. Then only I can go for buyback. That is restriction on buyback. Okay? Now the next question is, now the next question is, Securities premium account. This I will explain. This I will explain later. This I will explain later. Till this, till this, you have any doubt, please ask me. Till this, you have any doubt, please ask me so that we can continue further. Till this, if you have any doubt, please ask me. Please ask me if you have any doubts. Till this, so that I will continue further. No, sir. Clear, sir. No, sir. What about others? Shall we proceed further? Shall we proceed further? Whatever the provision I said, you should remember for solving the problem also. Whatever the provision I said, you should remember for solving the problem also. This premium also I will explain. So, no doubts so that I can uh, proceed further. Now, what is the journal entry? Now, what is the journal entry? Assume I am going for buyback. What will be the journal entry? When I am when I am issuing shares, what is the journal entry? When I am issuing shares, what is the journal entry? When I am issuing, finally, what will be the journal entry? Finally, what will be the journal entry? Bank debit, bank account debit to what will be credited? Share capital. Shareholders to share capital. Ultimately, this is the entry, correct? Ultimately, this is the entry. Now, what I am going to do? I am going to buying back the shares. I am not going to pay anything. I am not going to pay anything. Sorry, I am going to pay the, I am going to pay and buy back the shares. 
I'm not going to receive anything. I have to pay, which means, which means I have to. Reverse the entry. But the first thing is we have to pass the due entry. First thing is we have to pass the due entry. Due means we announced we announced the buyback. We completed the buyback. Now we have to pay the amount. I have to reverse my share capital. Why? Because I did buyback. Due means for whom it is due. To whom I am going to pay. To whom I am going to pay? To my shareholders, I am going to pay. To shareholders upon credit. To these people only it is due. Share capital is debited, and shareholders I have to pay. That is the first entry. Sequentially, then what? Payment entry. Payment entry to whom I have to pay now? To whom I have to pay? Who is the recipient? Who is the receiver? Shareholder is the receiver. Shareholder account is debited. What I am paying? It is an outflow, outflow of money. So to bank account is credit. This two entry only is very important. Share of capital account debit to shareholders account and credit is due entry. Then payment entry, shareholders account debit to bank account credit. Understood? When the amount is due, I have to credit my shareholders. When I make, I will debit and the shareholders because they are receiver and what is the going out, money is going out, so I am crediting. Credit what goes out. Okay? Understood, shall we proceed? Shall we proceed further? Shall we proceed further for solving the problem? Clear. Shall we proceed further? So I'm just going through the material. go to the entry So, I discussed, I discussed two entries now. First entry, both the entry only I discussed with you. Second entry, third entry, we will understand. We will understand while solving the problem. First entry and the fourth entry only I discussed. First entry and the fourth entry only I discussed with you. Premium and everything I will discuss. General, uh, uh, generally, basic entries I discuss with you. Further entries while solving the problems, 
I will discuss with you. So I will work out the first problem, simple problem, just to go through the question. X company limited buybacks its own shares, 2 lakh equity shares of 10 each at par. Company has sufficient profits otherwise available for dividend besides general reserve. No prestige of shares is made for this purpose. The shares are fully paid up. Generalize the transaction. So, company simple information they gave, they are buying back 2 lakh equity shares. Forget about, about total equity share capital, 10 percentage, 25 percentage, all those limited forget. That is not the question. Okay. And they gave uh, one provision in the question. What they said there? They have sufficient money. What they said? The company has sufficient profit otherwise available for dividend besides general reserve. They have sufficient reserves already in the company. And they are not going to issue new shares. They are not going to issue new shares. From existing reserve itself, they are going to purchase the uh, shares, buy back the shares. This is the question. What is the journal entry? And 2 lakh rupees, 2 lakh equity shares, 10 rupees each at a par. They are going to buy back. First, due entry. Due entry. What is due entry? To whom it is due? Shareholders it is due. Why it is due? I am going for buyback. If it is a buyback, I have to debit my share capital. Two share capital, two shareholders. Account credit. Two lakh into ten equal to twenty lakh. Twenty lakh. Twenty lakh. This is due entry. Then what? They have sufficient money. They have sufficient money in the balance. They have sufficient money, resource and surplus. Then I can directly go for payment entry. Payment, payment entry is missed out here. So directly they did. Payment entry I will explain, then I will explain the additional entry, okay? Payment entry is first I will complete, then I will explain the next entry. Don't follow the material answer, they did some error. Shareholders account debit to bank account credit 20 lakhs, 20 lakhs. So due entry is over, payment entry is over. Now the main question, you know all these things, but the main question is fund utilization. From where the fund coming? Which account I used as per the question? Which account I, I used for the buyback purpose? Which account I used for the buyback purpose? That only you can message me. Which account I used for buyback purpose? Which account I used for buyback purpose? Just read in the question. Just tell me. Just reading the question, tell me which account I used for buyback purpose. Resource from Revdi. What about others? What about others? General reserve from Bobadi. Sweta general reserve. Yes, they said that the company is having sufficient profit. Otherwise, available for dividend besides general reserve. They said so. We used the general reserve. So, as per uh, section, uh, section uh, what section 60 or 69. So what is the thing? If I use, if I utilize, if I utilize general reserve or security premium account for the purpose of for the purpose of buyback means I have to create, I, I have to create, I have to create. What I have to create? I have to create CRR, Capital Redemption Reserve. For what amount I have to create? For nominal value of shares, what? Nominal value means face value. Nominal value means face value of shares. I have to create CRR, which means I have to transfer from general reserve to CRR account. What is the CR nominal value here? 10 rupees is the nominal value. How many shares bought back? 2 lakh shares. 
So two lakh into ten equal to twenty lakhs. For this twenty lakhs amount, I have to create CRR. How I have to create creation of CRR? Heading is creation of CRR. From where I have to create? I have lot of money in general reserve. So what I'm doing from general reserve account to debit to CRR account to credit. From general reserve to CRR, I'm transferring. How much I'm transferring? Twenty lakh. Why? Because that much amount I use from my reserve. So I have to equivalently I have to create CRR. Okay? Understood? Till this understood? Till this understood? Till this understood? Shall we wind up for the day? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. So, any other doubts? Also, you can raise your hands. 